1984, Michael Jackson's Thriller album was sitting pretty on the Billboard charts at number 8 some 79 weeks after its release, and all six Jackson brothers, Michael included, were preparing for their victory tour to kick off in just over a week's time. I want you to know that I've decided to donate all my money I make from the performance to charity. A press conference was held in Kansas City to announce additional dates for the tour. Fans waited with bated breath for Knoxville to be added to the list of cities to be visited by the Jacksons. And by the end of the announcement, it was official. The Jacksons' victory tour would make its way to Neyland Stadium for at least two concerts with an option for a third if ticket sales warranted it. That's going to have a good impact locally as far as the tax structure goes and also in the statewide area. Um, I believe that this event probably will be the event of the decade. The dates were set August 10th and 11th with an option for the 12th. The price for a ticket was set at $29.75 or $83.69 with inflation in 2022. Nevertheless, fans were elated. I think people should pay $30 to see Michael Jackson. People always find money for what they want to do and they do what they want. Okay. So where there's a wheel, there's a way, and it'll be there. You think a lot of people will pay all that money to see him? Uh-huh. How come? Yeah. Yeah. He plays good music. Some fans weren't convinced that the experience would match the hefty price tag. You like him, huh? Mm, yeah. Uh, would you pay $30 to go see him in concert? I don't like him that much. <laughs> For the first time since the 4th of July celebration in 1982, Neyland Stadium would be used for something other than sporting events, but local promoters saw the tour as an event worthy of a venue the size of the football stadium. It's going to bring great international and national attention to Knoxville. It's going to provide the people from this area an opportunity to be a part of something that's uh, what people are billing as a very historical tour probably one of its kind that's certainly the largest has ever been done and and whether it be one larger in our lifetime I don't know. Unfortunately many downtown hotels were already booked up on the concert dates because of an AMVETS convention happening at the same time. However hotels further away from campus were looking forward to welcoming the rush come concert week. I think it'll bring a lot of extra people into our area that normally would not be here. And I think everybody in this end of town especially is looking forward to it because I think it'll bring book people and book the rooms. Merchants along the Cumberland Avenue Strip expected sale numbers to rival that of the World's Fair. I would say our business would jump just like everybody else in this area, jump just like three days of the World's Fair. Michael was already a hot seller at record stores across the area, but shops were making sure they were well equipped to handle the onslaught of Jackson fans that were sure to head their way. The company's already geared up and sent us a bunch of their catalog albums and stuff like that, so we're planning on putting up big displays and stuff like that. Do you expect your sales of Michael Jackson albums to increase? Of course. City officials estimated the concerts would bring in over $10 million to the local economy, with ticket sales reaching up to $6 million and a percentage going to county, city, and state funds. Knoxville would definitely get a boost from the victory tour, but not without the Jacksons asking for something in return. In total, 17 pages of demands, among them a five-story mixing tower with a barricade and a portable toilet, pre-washed bath towels, 2,000 pounds of dry ice, four forklifts with operators, 10 wardrobe attendants, 12 carpenters, 2,000 feet of clear plastic sheeting, 10 telephones, two with private lines, generators for extra power, 24 fire extinguishers, 400 feet of rubber matting, and around-the-clock security, just to name a few. Over the Jackson's two shows, an estimated 120,000 fans were expected to attend. Not since Billy Graham had visited in 1970 for a series of religious services had Neyland seen such attendance by a non-sporting event. Campus authorities didn't seem phased. Numbers don't bother us at all. We're used to numbers. What did concern them was possible damage to the football field. Although promoters had agreed to cover the field with plywood and non-flammable nylon and cover any damages, UT officials were still hesitant to sign the contracts. In case there is any damage of any kind, whether the stage collapses, whether the field falls in or whatever, then they'll be completely liable for it without any question. The university was only set to receive $35,000 per show for rental fees or $98,463 
and 52 cents in today's money. Nevertheless, the contracts were signed and the concerts were set to move forward. Okay, that's it. Signed on the 26th day of July, 1984. That's the day that was signed. We put it in there. Tickets, 60 tickets, free from WBIR and Pepsi to the Jackson. Happen Friday, August 10th at Neyland Stadium. You could be there. You and a friend could be part of the event that will make the summer of 84. Is the suspense killing you? Suffer no more. With affairs in order, tickets were set to go on sale the next day. Dozens of fans camped outside overnight at the Knoxville Civic Auditorium, and during the pouring rain, all for the chance to buy concert tickets. Limited to six per person, the final moments before the sale were sparked with short tempers. Literally said, we'll break a leg, we'll do this, we'll do that. All we had was our umbrellas. <laughs> Brouhaha's aside, things seemed to calm down once the doors were finally opened. At other locations, the wait was more peaceful, with the key statement being one of sacrifice for the dubious achievement of being first in line. You have a three and a half year old. Where was, uh, was it he or she? She. Where was she last night? She's with her daddy. Is that right? And what about this morning? Didn't he have to go to work? No, he took half day leave. <laughs> Sales proved strong enough to warrant a third show on August 12th, and with tickets finally in the hands of happy fans, Neyland Stadium was being prepped for the victory tour. 100 cars and trucks full of supplies crowded the stadium parking lot to begin construction on the massive concert set. Crews were making sure to be extra cautious as the building commenced. Well, we understand that uh, Tennessee football is rather sacred and Lord knows we don't want to uh, be sacrilegious around here, so we'll definitely take care of the field for you. Curious passers-by couldn't help but try to sneak a peek. I don't know why, we just wanted to look inside the, the door. Days before the show, however, construction had to be put on hold as postponement loomed over all three concerts after security threats in other cities. Jackson sources cited security considerations for not specifying the reasons for the Knoxville postponement. Well, I, you know, I think the community was uh, tremendously excited about the possibilities of the concert here, which, you know, was still being considered. And uh, I was excited. I saw the show in Kansas City. It's a great show. And uh, it would be, a, you know, just be a real shame and a disappointment not to have it. And if we don't have it this weekend, I hope we can have it. This is, I'm speaking personally now. But it's, uh, you know, it's, a, it's obviously, it's, it's a real bummer. Fans of all ages were left disappointed and confused at the prospect of the concerts being canceled. That's sad because I don't have I'm my ticket money. I'm going to get my money back for my ticket. And I really want to see him too. I would be worried about having to travel to get my money back or when the money's going to be back or if it's going to be rescheduled and if I could come to it if it were rescheduled. Well, I think it's a shame, you know, that someone would, you know, make such a threat to anyone. It would be very terrible because everybody's wanting them to come to Knoxville for the concert. After many hours of negotiation, an agreement was met and the shows were back on. We had in Dallas a bomb threat uh, and uh, we decided to proceed with the concert in Dallas. If we gave into this kind of conduct that we would place uh, the statements and threats of sickos above the interest of the hundreds of thousands of fans who want to see these concerts, and we just didn't want to do that. Uniformed city and county officers, as well as plainclothes security, would handle the crowds, and a perimeter would be set around the stadium. Officials said that security would be similar to a UT football game. Metal detectors would be placed at all gates, and bags would be subject to search. Promoters said the Jacksons were very much involved with the decision to move ahead with the three shows, and if there was any danger, they would have canceled the concerts outright. They will be safe at this concert. I, I just don't want people now to feel like they don't want to come because they won't be safe. They will be safe. Uh, I can guarantee that. We feel that the safety of the Jacksons uh, can be assured, and uh, we feel that those fans will see the most spectacular show that's ever been presented in America. Hey, two. Who's got extra? 
two hours before showtime on the scalpers suburbia known as Cumberland Avenue, the potential for a sale was high. How long have you been out here? About two hours. Worried about the rain at all? No, not really. I'm staying right through the rain. I'm just buying and selling. Temporary businesses springing up on the strip was nothing new, but the Jackson fans weren't so willing to give up their seats. We got them and I'm going. No, them. no. no. Why not? Definitely not. Why not? Because we want to see them. Really? I'm too stubborn. I'm not going to give up my ticket. And for some fans, the concert was the furthest thing from their mind. I was just up for the girls. I love Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson, number one. Upwards of 60,000 fans attended the opening night concert, and while there would only be one Michael on stage, there would be plenty in the stands. I watched some of his songs and way dances. Uh, way dances. I dance him. I dance like him all the time at home. The more mature crowd echoed the same sentiments. I like it best about him because my little girl here likes him. But I like that. I'm crazy about that Billie Jean. I can't be still when I hear that. Uh, I think he's cute. If there was one economic lesson to be learned from Jackson Mania, it's that if it said Jackson and a price tag could be attached to it, it would be sold in mass quantities. And once inside Neyland, fans were hit with a tidal wave of Jackson merchandise. We had a little boy come into our boys department and brought his piggy bank in and he broke it right there in front of the salespeople and counted out his nickels, dimes and quarters and bought a Michael Jackson jacket and he was ecstatic. With all official merchandise being sold inside the venue, anyone trying to make a quick buck off the victory tour outside of Neyland found it nearly impossible thanks to the overzealousness of Jackson security. Within a block of the stadium, feral agents were confiscating products they claimed were being sold illegally. The only people that are permitted to, to sell the Jackson concert is one company which is selling them inside the stadium. Okay? Okay. But that's the situation right now. Right. But we legally bought these items. So we don't care. You don't care. Anything with the Jackson name, logo, or likeness was confiscated by authorities citing copyright infringement laws. Even East Tennessee items bearing only the name Michael came under suspicion. Michael Jackson name or intent on a t-shirt. And we don't. We have Michael. And Michael is not a copyrightable name because it would eliminate every other Michael from doing this. After a brief delay because of rain, the moment fans had been waiting for had finally arrived. The Jacksons took the stage at Neyland Stadium. Beginning with Wanna Be Startin' Something, the Jackson Brothers played a total of 11 songs before their encore. After Billie Jean and Beat It, the Jacksons dazzled concert goers with their final song of the evening, Shake Your Body Down to the Ground. I think it was great. It was great. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> Thanks, Michael. The following two nights went off without a hitch, and over all three shows, 148,407 fans packed into Neyland Stadium to be a part of the Jacksons' victory tour, bringing in a revenue of $4,452,210 in ticket sales. This is the largest crowd they had had. He had said publicly several times that it takes 40,000 attendants for them to break even on this tour. So they, they've got a lot riding on it, a lot invested, and Knoxville had the largest attendance that they've had uh, anywhere. The 1984 Jackson's Victory Tour made 55 stops between July and December. In total, over 2 million fans attended the concerts, and this campaign marked the only time all six Jackson brothers would tour together. The turf at Neyland came away relatively unscathed. The plywood and plastic proved useful, and the field suffered only a small tear on the east sideline. The only other piece of evidence that multiple concerts had even taken place was a lightly colored patch of grass where diesel fuel was spilled and cleaned up. Come on, Speedy. Come on, Speedy.
The Vols were able to hold their scheduled scrimmage the very next week, declaring an end to whatever worries the concerts may have caused. Roberts thought the way things were handled at Neyland boded well for the potential for more concerts to run at the stadium. If the, uh, the right type of concert, the right, types of, right type of program comes along, then I think the university would consider it. One of the motivations they had for considering this one was one, the type of show, but two, what it would mean to the community. It would be close to two decades until Neyland hosted another concert. This time, it would be headlined by Kenny Chesney in 2003.